first <laughs> video I tried to do today about pets. Uh, I accidentally muted my headphones and <laughs> there was none of my uh, wonderful voice on the uh, video so I'm gonna have to do this again. It's pretty long so I'm gonna try to condense it. I'm gonna condense it anyway so I'm gonna try to be brief if I can. This is about pets okay. Um, in EverQuest you have combat pets, you have vanity pets or familiars um, and uh, sometimes the familiars will have a, uh, a buff that's connected with them but you can choose to have that buff or have the pet auto dismiss by clicking this auto leave button which I usually do and because this has a buff that I do um, this right here because sometimes I'll unclick this and I'll have this little gargoyle guy following me around because he matches my merc so you know there's that um, uh, let's see okay that's just a little preliminary thing okay pets let's really focus on the combat pets here I'm a neck the character is a necromancer I have a pet illusion on this guy um, he's my rogue pet I use my rogue pet on trash mobs and um, <clears throat> I use my tank pet on uh, names uh, and uh, sometimes if uh, you have a named in a certain area it has to be kind of an area where you can uh, charm something fairly close by it's usually it's not usually that difficult though uh, if you charm something and uh, use uh, the silent casting and then you go after the named with that um, it can usually hold aggro well enough for you to finish killing it so that's one but usually I don't mess with that I just use my tank pet um, for anything that I choose to do there's uh, uh, enhanced minion items okay the first thing I want to discuss is how this works when you have spells to cast to summon a combat pet that you want to use for your hunting around in this virtual world of Norath. Um, uh, the Necro has two different pets they can summon. A Beast Lord has just one pet they can summon. Um, and a Mage has a choice of four pets they can summon. Um, the Necro, the point of view I'm taking, is a tank pet. And we have a rogue pet. The rogue pet is higher so the spell is the highest level. It's on the last of uh, the whatever X pack, current X pack. The max level is 115. That's when you get your rogue pet. Tank pet is 112. Um, these are static. These are always the same. Back in the day, used to be your conjuration skill was included, was a factor in summoning pets, and you could summon and resummon a pet until <clears throat> you got a little higher con. A little higher level pet, uh, and that would that doesn't work like that anymore. They're they're static. They're always the same. Um, this rogue pet you could cast it as much as many times as you want, and it's always going to be the same level, same power, same everything. This one, the warrior pet's going to be the same way, right? These two pets differ from each other, but I'm just saying if you get you know you can't increase the level by recasting it or anything. Um, this increases the level. And how it works is it has a buff. Just, you just have to be wearing this, and it's enhanced minion, and this will increase the power of, of your combat pet when you summon it, as well as your casted swarm pets. The skeletal horde, whatever, it's the spell that you cast for your swarm pets. Those are influenced by enhanced minion also. And when you summon a pet, it's because you're summoning it. When you use the AA, <clears throat> these right here, the wake dead, rise bones these these right here these three it's all purely based off the AA level but not so for your swarm pets over here that's they are influenced by this um, what happens is when you summon a pet with this on it gives the pet a cloak or a back item that um, adjusts the pet to uh, the power level that uh, is appropriate for that uh, enhanced minion level that you have on the gear that you have on your character and uh, this is also why 
the armor on that uh, cloak, if you will, is notoriously a little low. So if you try to put a shield or a a cloak or back item on a summoned minion of yours, <clears throat> that's from uh, you know, try to put some uh, an attunable version of you know some sort of a tunable uh, shield. It'll put it on and it'll totally screw your pet up. Uh, so you don't want to do that. Okay, always use summon gear for your pet and or use pet uh, gear or gear that you give to your pet that uh, you know what's going to happen, right? How does the pet choose what to equip um, or what to wear? It If it's a, in an armor slot, it has it has one ring slot. It has one ear slot, and then everything else in one wrist slot, and then everything else is identical uh, to your character portrait here as far as slots, except it has no charm slot, and it has no range slot. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I'm very sorry. Um, so this is, how's it? So if you uh, say you give it, uh, I don't know, say. Uh, uh, a face item right that you found you're, you're running around oh here we go I got something in my bag here here we go this is a shoulder item all right um, right here okay it has a shoulder slot and this has more armor and that's how it's going to decide the summoned mage gear that you have will have a certain you know amount of AC on it and hit points and whatnot okay um, Usually the mage gear is hit point heavy and a little lighter on the on the AC, right? Current uh, sort of droppable, uh, attunable gear will typically have a little less AC maybe or uh, hit points maybe eh, in the neighborhood. It depends on the what slot it is. I, I believe from the shoulders it, this actually has more hit points, and um, the AC is going to be way more, right? What the pet does, it looks at the AC, and if the AC in the item you're giving it is more than the AC that it has in its current shoulder slot, it will equip it, and you will never be able to get that back. Okay, so when you're giving your pet stuff, be very careful what you're giving it. Okay, it has pet uh, weapons, and if you go, oh, I got these weapons I'll never use. I'll give them this weapon here and see how it works. It'll take that weapon. You know, odds are it'll take that weapon um, because in the weapons it goes by delay it doesn't go by damage it only goes by delay if the weapon you're giving it is faster than the weapons it has equipped it will equip that weapon and you will never see that weapon again gear that you give your pet has to be attunable it doesn't care what class but it has to be attunable you cannot give it a no drop item it'll give it right back then it'll give it back um, the problems with giving pet stuff is you can't really experiment unless you're willing to just lose what you're giving it, right? Um, <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, mage gear, okay? People will argue, uh, well, I give my pet uh, two wrist items all the time. I know they have two wrist slots. Okay, no, that's not what you're doing. Okay, the mage gear that is summoned for some reason it has two wrist items and one has more AC than the other and when you're giving it all the gear you're giving it in such a you just happen to be giving it in an order that is increasing when you have the wrist items you give it one and then a little bit later you give it the other wrist item it happens to be a little bit more AC so it just gets rid of the one it had that you just gave it and it replaces that with the higher AC one so that's what's really happening um, under the covers there or whatever. Um, and I got an itch. Uh, elbow. Been arguing, or arguing, been gardening and doing yard stuff uh, last couple days. Um, oh, let's see here. What else? Uh, rogue's pets, as well as the mage rogue pet, uh, the, they backstab. They do not have to be behind the mob. They could be in front. They just backstab. I don't I don't know for sure maybe somebody in the comments can confirm if whether or not they might backstab a little more often or maybe crit more often if they're behind 
but I do know that they I will demonstrate here in a minute that this will backstab uh, a mob here just fine I've set up an audio trigger right here it's Elwood backstabs blah 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 so whenever this text comes up when he when he backstabs it'll give a little thump or whatever a little funky noise and um, you'll know that well that was a backstab on average it probably backstabs oh anywhere from 12 15 16 times a fight against these skeletons or I think they're around 112 113 or something like that in level and uh, they're dark blue to me at 115 so I think they're about 112 um, these right here are illusions, illusion spells that if you have a heroic character will not be in your spell book. You have to actually go to POK, go into the library there, and find the uh, the uh, necro uh, spell people vendors, and you can uh, and then you can buy these. They'll be missing though, unless uh, the devs like fix it or something. You'll be missing, I think, at least two, if not three, of these spells, of these four. You'll get one for sure. I think you get this one, Bleach Bone, and maybe Model Bone, too. You might only be missing these two. All right, this one right here is what I use. I put this on my tank pet so I can tell them the difference. Because when you, because uh, they both, whether it's a tank or a rogue pet, they always look, they look like this when you summon them. Unless you have a raid uh, enhanced minion item. Sometimes they get a special kind of funky little graphic that's, you know, signals to everybody, ooh, it's a raid pet, you know, kind of thing. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, they're going to have, uh, they're going to look the same. So I, I like to have them look different. And so I always do this for my rogue pet. And then my other pet, which is in my other pet slot, you can switch pets by using suspend companion is right here this one here uh, I use my tank pet when you have uh, this AA max they keep all buffs they've had uh, before and uh, whatnot um, I think this specter model illusion whatever this looks better than the stock one when you first I like this side it looks better I think it looks cooler so uh, I uh, use that one my tank pet but I'm gonna go ahead and take my rogue pet, bat, pet back out because these are just trash mobs like I said I use my tank pet for rare mobs um, he can usually do the job he you gotta babysit him with uh, some runes and whatnot sometimes you have to really time them a certain way um, most of the time and you have to have all your cooldowns all good to go uh, spire is an especially important one if you want your pet to have a chance to live against some really tough ra uh, uh, really tough ones uh, rares but uh, so there's that every pet every necro pet and S shadow knight pet has an ability called feign death that they can do which is especially important for these two classes because they use their get out of jail free AA drop aggro for sure ability uh, they use that for more than just uh, you know living right they, we use that as a pulling mechanism to try to get to get singles and stuff single certain mobs out Let's straighten that so I'm not oops so I'm not digging down okay um, oops visible so I don't all right so I'm gonna grab a mob here. Maybe I'll grab one and accidentally aggro more, and you'll get to see FD stuff. Ooh, there we go. Ah, this is very good. All right, my pet needs to heal me so I, so I don't die. So I'm gonna FD first, even though I only got one thing, so that my uh, Merc does not get aggro. Now, if you got aggro, I could have gotten it back from him. It's not that big a deal. But I just wanted to demonstrate that any healing, any curing, anything that happens to you while you're in the prone position in FD, whether you've dropped aggro instantly or not, will not give your Merc um, aggro. 
and you pop back up. And incidentally, uh, Death's Effigy, which is the you know instant uh, drop aggro, you know uber feign death that uh, Necros and Shadow Knights get. Um, this can be done. Let's say, for example, see my FD button here. I also have uh, the uh, death piece uh, on that one. So I'm going to do that. Death piece, right? Um, I'm prone. I say the aggro is still on and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, it's not dropping real well. When this comes back, I will be able to do this even though I'm prone and it'll drop aggro completely just as if I casted it when I was standing up. So you can do that in a pinch to kind of make sure aggro is completely dropped. Uh, there are certain situations that you wish you your DE was still active but it was down. You can just kind of stay down here as long as you want and even if you think this death piece is not going to take effect you can go ahead and hit that again boom and that'll completely drop the aggro just as if you did it like, like before. So I got it there. Um, there we go. Already a backstab. Two backstabs. Let's count them, shall we? Just like the on Sesame Street. Three. <laughs> Four. Five, five backstabs. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. <laughs> Ten. Ten backstabs. <laughs> Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Gonna get a fourteen here. Nope, no 14. So 13, 13 backstabs. Um, this is my melee logs, and this thing is really. Oops, I got a friend give me a tell. Seen that guy in a while. Drizzit do. Oh, Forgotten Realms fan there for Dritz. Um, Dritz, whatever. It's the Dark Elf Ranger. Okay, so there we go. So we got the backstabs there. Backstabs will range in, uh, as a general rule, I've, I found like on these skeletons here um, for crits, they'll crit. Maybe anywhere from three to five, six times ish or so. And the crits sometimes will be. Oh, what is it? Sometimes will be pretty high up there, up over 200k. And that's without the Frenzy Dead going off. Um, a lot, most of the time, it's around uh, 125, 130k for a crit. Uh, normal hits are around. Is it 15, 20k, something like that? I haven't actually paid attention to the normal hits. Um, I'm intentionally keeping moving on my snare. I got Frenzy Dead uh, embedded in the macro, but I'm 
intentionally moving so it doesn't activate so that I can uh, get a better sense for the damage. I'm just going to do it again here real quick. Um, another thing about pets. Okay, we covered the pet gear. Uh, the fane. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's try the fane stuff, right? Here's what we're going to do. I've even put dots on, right? I got this oh crap button that will feign myself and my pet at the same time. Let's do that. See how this is going to work. Hopefully save my pet. Oops, sorry. Okay, now that mob is attacking uh, the other little baby skeletons there. Now he's attacking my Merc. This tells me that it, with Fane Death, there are two checks that are given. One's the initial. If it, if you fail the first check, which almost never fails for the pet, um, at least max level and max, you know, skill level uh, for pet discipline, you get this pet Fane through pet discipline A. Anyway, uh, it'll uh, the pet will. Now the clearing aggro part of it, so the initial, if it fails, the mob would just keep on hitting my pet even though it was on the ground and it would die very quickly. Um, the fact that after the pet feigned, it went direct to uh, one of the baby skeletons there means that uh, that part was a success. As well as of course mine because I DE'd there. Okay. I can wait for his darkness thing to kind of go off but uh, I see I'm getting the aggro back why because there are dots on him still if I was to get up right now he would re-aggro okay because there's still damage being done right so what do I have to do is <laughs> wait for him to walk off. He's gonna walk it off, Bubba. Okay, he's gonna walk off. And this dot's got 20 seconds to go. This dot's got 20. It's okay. We gotta wait till all the dots are done. Okay, because the second I stand up, you see he's on the list over here. He's going to come at me. He's going to bring some friends too, probably. Okay, now I'm still prone. All those, not, now these debuffs are going to matter, right? I'm going to FD again. This button is going to activate this skill. There we go. Even though I'm down, this you can still activate this to drop aggro fully again if you had happen to have dots on something, right? So I'm going to get up. Now what happens if my pet actually failed to drop aggro on the mob? If I just have him stand up by hitting the sit button again, he may not have dropped aggro, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon him to me, which which is a surefire way to drop all aggro he may have attained through a fight. And in this macro, I have him stand up. And sure enough, he stood up, and there's no aggro on him at all. Right? So uh, that's how I use pet fane in a, you know, to save my pet in a oh crap situation. This is not good. I shouldn't have never tried this. I'm in over my head, but I don't want a Levant. Or maybe I've tried to a Levant and um, the portal was, you know, collapsed. You know how it fails that sometimes. Um, and I'm like, oh, I could gate. But that's, you know, that requires a lot of traveling. I'm going to hit my oh crap button and wait five minutes on my Merc, but my pet and me will survive. And including the pet gear on my pet and having the hassle of having to put new pet gear on it and stuff. I'm not a mage, I'm a necro. Pet gear is important to me. And even though as a general rule back in the old school days, uh, 
necro pets were kind of disposable at least the way I play I don't consider my pets disposable I use them much more mage like and I use them to tank the extra damage they put out is a lot is very much underestimated if you just root and rot mobs versus pet tanking a mob you kill that pet you kill that mob way faster than if you just put dots on it so that's how that works um, so pet feigned you know you can think of various different ways to use it I suppose in pulling but the way I pull um, because I've I always have G hold on and everything like that so the pet unless I send it in to attack the pets never gonna get aggro it's never gonna get on the list yet right so if I get hit by a spell or you know I've done something to tick off the mob because I'm pulling and I want to and uh, other mobs come when I FD using this this has a level range right here this FD is five levels if it's higher if it's six if a mob is six levels higher than you this will do jack squat and you will die you will not drop the aggro as a matter of fact I, don't, I think you, you don't even pass the first check in a typical FD you fail everything and the mob will just keep running at you somebody might check me on that I'm not completely sure but I'm pretty sure that's how it works I've actually never tested that um, let me see here what else would I want to do we already did the backstab thing just trust me on the tank bed tank bed is uh, tougher not quite as much DPS I would say I kill mobs about 10% faster with my rogue pet I just think they're kind of cool I just think the rogue, pet, rogue pets are kind of cool so um my buddy might have come and find me. Oh, Drits at Dew is somewhere else. Um, told you how enhanced minion works. I told you about the gear slots. Um, ah, okay. Here's another thing. This right here. A necessary buff, in my opinion, that everybody should be using for their unless they're unless they're aggro kiting. I hate kiting. I don't like kite. That's too much moving around. Too much work, right? I either want to, if I have to root and rot because the pets are super weak and whatever new X pack is up, and I have to root and rot to survive to get levels for a while until you know I, I get the next pet coming up at, at the appropriate level. That's fine. I'd rather root and rot and just sit and watch something just slowly die than actually. Uh, actually kite stuff and go faster it's too much work this right here is a buff that will add a life tap to your um, pet and it does 6500 damage which is no slouch this is the extra in addition to whatever mage procs and also in addition to the life tap procs that all necro pets have so you have one life tap proc from this you have a life tap proc from the actual pet which I think at this level is around 10k. This will heal for like 52k every time this procs. And then you got the damage procs from the mage weapons. All of that is in addition to the kind of lame pet taunt. Um, stacks a bunch of aggro. A bunch of aggro on, on mobs and uh, you know you are good to go with pet aggro. Um, I always have that. I have that uh, with the pet attack. It's cast nine. Q pet swarm will send any extra still alive uh, swarm pets you have active into a new target. This right here is the fortify companion. So on pet attack, it, if this is up, it'll cast this. On when I pull something with, with my snare button. If I'm stationary for a moment, because this has like a half a second cast time or a quarter second, something like that, it'll cast this. But if I'm moving, it won't cast this. Occasionally, I don't want this to cast, but most of the time I do. Um, so that's that. I already told you about the Call Skeleton Horde. It's influenced by Enhanced Minion. 
if you don't have an enhanced minion earring on at the time or your enhanced minion is uh, lower and you use it and you're used to how this is working then when you get an upgrade for inst your enhanced minion earring you might notice a slight a little better difference uh, when you're casting this spell here because this casted swarm pet spell will be influenced by enhanced minion um, I think that's about it I want to keep this a little shorter my first video that has no audio because my stupid headphones were muted because of my sausage fingers I guess or whatever um, I think that's about it I'm gonna to try to put out more videos I think this is kind of fun uh, and uh, if you can think if you have any pet questions about how combat pets work uh, for a mage or a necro I don't know much about beast lord pets uh, mage and necro is my main experience so I know a little something about those and uh, how they work some stuff I don't know well, the good amount of stuff I do know what I sometimes what I think I know is wrong so please feel free to correct me if you know something different and you're sure. Um, I'm not going to get all crazy with it and demand proof or any kind of crap like that. You know, I mean, if, if you think you're right, yeah, just throw it up there, and you know, we'll see. Um, have a good one. See you in Norath. Have fun and uh, get vaccinated. All right, see you.